She's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest cheerleader for good, healthy relationships between dad and the other wives. I'm sexy, I'm cute, I'm popular to boot. I'm wanted, I'm hot, I'm everything you're not. And then a hero comes along. Episode 13 starts off with a Zoom gender reveal party. Kinda over Zoom parties, don't really care about gender reveals, but when Christine starts teasing Cody and Robin showing up, I realize we are about to witness one of the most awkward family Zoom calls of all time. I was nervous that Gabe and Garrison weren't gonna show up. Maddie's jumping on. I'm hoping that we can all get on and go our separate ways. I'm really honestly interested to see how the kids are with Cody and Robin on the call. I don't care if they're on the call. I don't care. Christine is so over Cody and Robin. I know this is the episode we're going to get the big patty cake Cody line of you're not going to separate Robin and I. And it's like, who is he talking about? Christine doesn't give a sh How big are these people's egos? Please. Um, Logan and Aspen are running a little late. Knowing the background that Gabe and Maddie, who are going to be on this call, are basically not speaking with Cody and Robin. Mr. and Mrs. Scowl showing up like it's a court appearance kind of makes sense. I don't care. You're irritating. Please report. Back. Pay attention. Um, it's fun to see everybody. Cody, be a better actor, please. Like, you look like you're about to receive an enema, even in this confessional. I mean, quickly into the Zoom call, you can see Cody texting somebody with his phone below the screen. You know he's texting Aurora like, oh, this would be so much more fun if my real kids were here. In confessional, Cody continues to drop little turds of information. I haven't had a really positive experience with some of my children. It's like the way I would describe getting bad service at a restaurant. Like, dude, you banged these children into existence. You need to do the heavy lifting here. I just can't do it. I'm hoping that them seeing Cody and I and our smiles. will help them to realize that I'm not the bad guy. There is no faith you are and then she told McKelty and Logan to tell us that she wasn't going to talk to us anymore. I'm done with you. you are then Aurora comes on the screen in confessional. I wanted to speak up uh, on behalf of my mom. She's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest cheerleader for good, healthy relationships and correspondence between dad and the kids and dad and the other wives. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. Okay, uh, where to start with this? Since we've all seen exactly how terrible Cody has been to his other wives and other kids. All of you are just kind of jerks. I have to assume this is just a young woman sticking up for her mom. Do I blame her? No. Aurora is so young, so immature, and like her mother, doesn't realize how reality television works. Like, um, if anything, this will probably make people hate Robin more. Even though there's like strife and struggle, they're still like, well, this is still a family. These Tony and McKelty confessionals have sort of recently gone viral because if you look closely, you can see two things. First of all, uh, McKelty and Tony are in their like, you know, post weight loss era. And the other thing is that they have put some sort of a pillow on McKelty's stomach area to make it appear as if she is still pregnant. Um, it is kind of incredible. I actually didn't notice the first time I watched this through, but uh, read about it online because it is pretty obvious. I started out being almost in a state of paranoia with anxiety over the contempt that has been thrown my direction. Poor me, I'm just a victim. This is all everybody else's fault. It has nothing to do with my blatant favoritism for Robin and her family. Now let's talk about these people's real lives. Let's get to some real 
Let's judge their Zoom backgrounds. Janelle and Savannah are using the vertical format, even though there's two of them. Great job guiding your mom to the technological light, Savannah. Let's talk about the most interesting background to me. Look at Logan and Michelle's place. I assume this is Logan's place because Michelle is there. First of all, that setup, very classy. I don't really know what makes something classy. I grew up in Oklahoma, but that looks classy to me. Now, Gwen has apparently set her phone on the floor. I do see a stack of boxes with what appears to be a Christmas tree or something crawling out of the top of it. This could be any room in my house right now. We recently moved and we haven't unpacked a single thing, so. Sometimes life has to move on and you just live out of boxes for six months. Maddie, not much to see, but I think it's interesting that Caleb is watching and participating a little bit off screen. You know, I've been the partner in a big family Zoom call. After about two minutes, you do find yourself as the partner wanting to do the Homer Simpson slowly fade into the bushes thing. Only because I am not as cool as Truly, who gives her fam deuces and pieces out. So. I mean, Cody really doesn't have much contact with many of these people in these boxes. So where is Aurora and Brianna? Where's Ari and Sol? Where's Dayton? Where are Robin's kids? Did Robin not want her children on the call? Is, you know, is she trying to protect them from the evil OG's kids? I mean, we, we have this confessional from Aurora, just my mom has never done anything wrong. And my mom has only ever been the number one cheerleader for this family. And it's just, okay, if your mom only ever brings everyone together, like, where are you? Why are you not on the Zoom call? You're, the McKelty is supposed to be like one of the few OG children that you guys are all okay with. Why aren't you on the Zoom call with everybody else? At the end of the Zoom gender party, we get the clip, one of the standouts from the preseason trailer. It's Cody in a confessional. And Robin and I are going to be like this. You're not going to separate us. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's like he's Schmeagol and it's like, oh, my precious, my precious Robin. Robin and I are gonna be like this, and we're gonna work this out. Cody, we all know you and Robin are gonna be like this. Everybody knows you're some melted skin ball of lies and cover-ups. Then he sort of leans forward like, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. That's just the relationship we're gonna be in. In confessional, McKelty makes a plea to the camera that everybody in the family needs each other. I think that they all need each other. Robin's kids need Janelle's kids and my mom's kids and Mary's kids. We all need each other. Christine lets us know that that McKelty meet everyone's needs speech uh, doesn't apply to Mary. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where Mary was. She won't be on any other things for McKelty and her children. Mary is either not asked about this in confessional or she's refusing to answer, or the producers have taken this content out on purpose. If you aren't aware, McKelty in the past has made some like pretty vague verbal abuse allegations against Mary. It's just hard to talk about because they're not being asked to explain it explicitly, and it is a touchy subject. So I don't know, it's a big question mark. Speaking of Mary, we are back in redoing the carriage house mode. Check on the current status of the carriage house. What is happening? What are you doing here? 911, what's your emergency? Yes, I was hired by Mary Brown. Uh, she's, she's on a famous TV show. She, I'm supposed happening. to redo her carriage house. She won't stay out of it! Stay out! I told her she won't stay out of it. I need a police officer here right now. I mean, I told her if she tried to come in, she wasn't gonna get, she wasn't gonna be able to, and she would stay out, Mary, stay out! out we are throwing Isabel a little surf and turf goodbye party starring adorable Avalon. So Tony's always asking me about my dating life. Always. Now Tony gets a lot of flack from the fans including me but like 
Tony is pushing this scene forward. He's on it. He knows, uh, we need something other than noodle head confessionals and another McKelty pregnancy announcement. Don't push away. Truly, I love our see what's what. my eyes, I done seen some crazy things in the street. Got a couple holes working on the chain just for me. They cut to this unfortunate school yearbook photo of Christine. Have I mentioned how much of a glow up Christine's had? Needed a love with the underdogs on top. And I'm gonna shine on me until my heart stops. Go ahead, envy me. I'm Raps MVP. I have an opportunity to go do this road trip with Christine, so I'm gonna go. Surprise, surprise. We're getting a road trip with Janelle and Christine. That my best friend. She a real bad bitch, got her own money. And what goes great with a road trip? Talking shit about other people. I wanted to ask you about a comment that Robin made. Great, it's great. If I was still like usually in the church, you have to get like the approval and stuff of, yeah. we all know if we're not, I'm not if part of that church. The, aren't all the adults not in the church? Ryan? Thank you, Christine. Thank you. No, none of them are a part of that church anymore. So it doesn't make sense. Janelle tries to explain. There has to be something that keeps, puts teeth in these, in these agreements. Okay, no disrespect to Janelle, but I think Christine kind of showed us that there are no teeth. The teeth are veneers, but actually they're dentures. You know, obviously my marriage is not good. True that. Christine's like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is obvious. We cut away from the ladies road trip to get a little visor Cody action. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. There's a big hairy American winning machine. Uh, it's been 10 months since I've- Thought about anything but Robin's diesel jeans ass. Robin and I, we've got sort of this special life together. Ew. Stop it. Get some help. We are reacquainted with Brian. I was the one that married Brian to his wife, Judith. I, I performed their wedding ceremony. Oh, Cody, we will never forget the time you chose to show up to dance at Brian's wedding while refusing to support Isabel's surgery. I'm sorry I can't go. You understand, right? You're not gonna become a bitter old housewife because your daddy didn't do this for you. Turns out Brian has bought three of Cody's cars, including the infamous little white sports car from season one, which of course, who can forget that early bombshell that a polygamist with four partners and 90 billion children would choose to buy a tiny convertible. We should have put some lubrication I on that jack. They do a montage on the sports car. I got my answer about Cody and the white sports car. He felt bad talking to me. And I feel God in this Chili's tonight. There's a lot of fun stuff that happened in that white sports car. We spend a large quantity of time watching these two bozos attempt to squeeze this tiny car into this trailer. And like, I am not a car expert, but I don't think you can just roll a car into a trailer and everything will be okay. Like there has to be a little bit more effort put into it. And uh, we see clearly zero effort has been put into anything because the car doesn't even fit. Back on the road with Janelle and Christine. I love going to bed at night. Dogs are on the bed with me because you never could stand that. Like Definitely sure as hell not doing that online dating thing. I don't get the whole swiping thing. I don't get that. We revisit the origin story of Cody and Janelle. Oh, there's no doubt that I probably flirted with Janelle a little bit. Of course, the real story here, which doesn't get talked about, is whether this happened before or after Janelle's marriage to Mary's brother was finished. But what they will do, and I love that we're getting this, they will talk about Robin. We used to have this magical four days of feasting for Thanksgiving. Yes, I know. When Robin came, a lot of those traditions changed. They changed. Every single Saturday we were doing things and Robin came in the family and it stopped. Well, nobody tell Aurora, don't want to burst that young lady's bubble. She thinks her mom was the freaking glue, even though her mom was the batteries in Cody's hacksaw. Cody does his thing that he does with Robin. But Robin always supported our family traditions. In fact, she actually enhanced our traditions. Oh no, that wasn't her stopping anything, okay? That was her enhancing. It's like our family went from a B cup 
to double D's and enhancement. Janelle explains in very clear terms Cody's downfall as a polygamist. One of the things a plural husband is supposed to do is he needs to grow beyond himself. He should have continued to grow to be able to meet the needs of all the other women. The ladies' road trip ends at Christine's little brother's place, and I am blown away at the next few scenes. After everything that went down in earlier seasons with Dayton and having his whole face almost turn off in an ATV accident, what do we see here? Janelle and Christine riding helmetless down a dirt path on ATVs. And yes, Janelle does look like a badass. Christine does look like a badass riding down that dirt path. But I am still in shock. Like, how are y'all gonna sell that plexus sh when your faces look like thrift store catcher's mitts. This lady's road trip has kind of come to a screeching halt. Yeah, so cool to see you again. Christine has really grown a lot from season one where she was that naive, I don't know what's happening, girl. And we are reminded of that version of her. You guys live in one house? Yeah, dad had our mom downstairs. That did not work well for a long time. Yeah. There, was, there was a couple times where they were like just furious and like yelling at each other and stuff. There were some times where, I mean, you could just feel the tension <laughs> in the room. Okay. I mean, it was like you could cut the tension with a knife. To me, I didn't even notice the tension. I just thought they were fine. I remember it being a party and having so much fun. I thought it was like a rager. You know, Levi's mom yelling at my mom. The toddlers are playing crouch in the corner. And I'm like, er, 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 yeah, can I put some beats to this yelling match, mommies? As their discussion continues, Janelle takes on the position of we should legalize all of these marriages so that these women have rights. Christine does a great job in confessional, adding some context. What Janelle is saying is, if I would have had a legal marriage with Cody, and if she would have had a legal marriage with Cody and Mary too, and when it came down to leave, it'd be also a legal divorce. It would be a 50-50 split of everything. Yeah. It cannot be more clear that Janelle feels she's been financially screwed. I think Cody and Robin have been living well, at least partly off of Janelle and Mary. And I have no idea if I'm even gonna get anything. Girl, they f***ed you. They ripped you off. But the good news is, you would jump into this whole system again. They have Mary chime in to add a little delusion syrup into this concoction. I still believe it's gonna be divided up equally and fairly between the four of us. And then they end the episode with Christine going full truth bomb. So financially independent, cause then you have choices. One of the reasons she's still with Cody is because of this, cause she has nothing in her name. Oh my God, it's true. She said the thing that's true and Christine just gave a sermon and that's it. That's how they end the episode. With a fizzled out girls road trip and some scathing truths via Chris. If the random internet websites that tell us when these shows end are correct, next episode may be our last content filled episode before the tell alls. I believe this episode we are going to get Robin's big line from the preseason trailer, Robin's big knife to the kidney moment. Meet me back here next week as we recap potentially the last actual real episode of the season. Plus, mark your calendars the rest of the season. Sarah from Reality Squad and I are going to be streaming live on Mondays. Sarah already has been streaming live on Mondays and I am excited to be joining her for the rest of the season. So make sure you have notifications set because we are gonna be talking sister wives every Monday night throughout the rest of the season at seven, six central.